Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Golf of Your Life series, video number six. I'm your instructor, Chris Tyler. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to get some good extension into your finish position. I know a lot of amateur golfers tend to struggle with getting that dreaded chicken wing look, and they tend to have a lot of extra body rotation down in the hitting area, which in turn can start to cause erratic ball striking, can make your release a little bit late. So I wanna spend a few minutes just kind of recapping some of the stuff that we've already covered over the first five weeks. Video number one, we were talking about minimizing that head movement, trying to get a little bit more centered in your golf swing. That way you start to eliminate a lot of moving parts that are gonna affect bad ball striking. Also, we've discussed early extension of the spine. We've discussed how to shake out tension with your hands and your arms. So the way this video series is designed is that if you ever start to develop some of these faults in your golf swing, you can always circle back to any of these videos at any particular time revisit the drills, spend a lot of time going through those repetitions over, the, over the, that next week or so, and then you'll start to shake out some of that bad stuff and start playing some of your good golf again. Okay, so the drill this week to help kind of tie it all together is how we're gonna create proper extension. I know in, in some of the previous weeks we talked about how to control the bottom of the swing arc and getting the club to bottom out in the same spot every single time. Now, what we're gonna be talking about is what we're gonna do after impact here. And a lot of people are like, well, Chris, why does that even matter? The golf ball's already gone. Well, things that happen post-impact are ways for us to reverse diagnose things are, that are going on in the golf swing. So if you do see yourself getting that dreaded chicken wing look, why is this happening? Well, let's talk about it that for a second here. So if you were to have both hands directly out in front of you and you were to push your, your lead arm across your center, keep pushing, 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 what's your trail arm gonna eventually do here? Okay, it's gonna break. I'm sorry, this would be my actual, my, my lead arm on my left side, pushing my trail arm across my center you can see that my arm starts to break. So we can understand that if you're battling with too much of that right side dominance down there, we can figure out ways to give you drills so that post impact you don't have that particular chicken wing look. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be looking for when you shift your weight over to your left side and you get things nice and stacked up. We've talked about the left shoulder, left hip socket, left knee and left ankle being right stacked on top of each other. Now what I want you to do when you're releasing the club and your wrists and forearms are extending out in front of you, is I want you to keep the buttons on your shirt behind your belt buckle. If you notice that your buttons are getting on top of your belt buckle or in front of your belt buckle, that's when you're gonna to start to use too much of the trail side of your body. So let's show you what that looks like here. And I start to push really hard. You can see now my buttons are really stacked up on top of my belt buckle here. So my goal now is what I'm gonna do here is when I, after I get my left side stacked up, I'm gonna keep my buttons back, keep my head back, and I'm gonna allow the club to pull me up into a finish. But I wanna keep my buttons back as long as humanly possible. So let's show you again here in slow motion. So shift left, left side of the body stacked up, keep my buttons back. You're gonna notice that my shoulder plane is gonna to start to steepen quite a bit that's gonna help hold the hands and arms out in front of the body. So let me show you from this angle here. Shift left, so keep my buttons back. You can notice that my shoulder plane starts to steep, steepen a little bit. This is a great way to start to develop some good, good extension in your golf swing. Also helps the club stay on a good path. That's gonna help you start keeping the ball more on target more often. Okay guys, so that's video number six. I wish you guys all the much success with this over the next week or so. Get your thousand reps in of this and you'll start to hit the ball more consistently more solidly every single day.